The classified label is how the MIC hides their war crimes and human rights violations. If they're not doing anything wrong, what do they have to hide, right? Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, before we get into this week's episode, uh, I just want to let you guys know that if you enjoy uh, the content that I am putting out, uh, whether it's these Fork Full of Noodles videos, whether it's my uh, interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, the dispatches, the road reflections, uh, the live streams, wh whatever it is, if you if you find some uh, value out of it, uh, one big thing that you can do to help independent media such as this channel here is by hitting the like button, hitting the share button, and making sure you are subscribed to the channel. That's how we subvert and get around the censorship that channels like mine see pretty consistently. The other way you can help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a donation or become a sustaining member by making monthly contributions. Uh, you can do that directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. There is a justification to this insanely large war budget. Some people say that this high cost is worth it to preserve our freedoms, and this is a fabrication. The military-industrial complex actually jeopardizes our freedoms at home and strips freedoms from other countries. As I pointed out earlier, almost three-fourths of our weapon sales go to the nations that are oppressing another group of people, like in the case of Israel oppressing Palestine and Saudi Arabia oppressing Yemen. And the 25% of countries that America considers undemocratic are basically socialist democracies that have rejected American imperialism, like Venezuela, Bolivia, Honduras, and various other Latin and South American countries. So America puts economic sanctions on them, preventing them to be able to participate in global trade and accessing their own funds overseas. That's what American freedom actually looks like. Sanctions are warfare. Instead of using bullets and bombs, it uses capitalism's favorite thing, money, as a tool to bring pain, trauma, and death to countries that have chosen to take care of their people instead of chase the dragon that is infinite profit. Most of the propaganda and ad budgets are going to cover their own asses and ensure that uh, the general public can't see the destruction they cause uh, and the, the war crimes that they commit on a regular basis. The biggest example of that is the amount of time, money, and energy that has been spent into trying to extradite Julian Assange for revealing the atrocities of two branches of the military industrial complex. Assange, WikiLeaks, and many other whistleblowers showed us that the US military openly kills civilians and journalists, while the CIA uses entertainment technologies like smart TVs to spy on American citizens. Most recently, it was revealed that 70 civilians in Syria were murdered by an American drone. Task Force 9, the group that dropped the bomb, claimed it was self-defense. The video showed that there were maybe three people with guns, but they weren't in attack position. And there were way more civilians than potential threats. After the attack, Task Force 9 bulldozed the area, hiding key evidence and communication logs were changed. And all, all this was revealed to Congress by a whistleblower who witnessed the bombing from a military base miles away. I mean, how are all those people that are involved in this not in prison for committing war crimes? Well, the Pentagon did investigate themselves, and they found that they didn't do anything wrong. I, I mean, of course they did, right? This is an organization that thinks hiring mercenaries is a morally upstanding decision while they fail every audit that they've ever undergone. Th this is like asking a serial killer if they're a serial killer. Of course they're going to say no, and then they're very likely going to recite their manifesto to you. Okay, The military just recites recruitment propaganda. 
it is interesting that we chastise whistleblowers for revealing crimes of the American military or the elites. But if a civilian was even to jaywalk in America, those people would call for the death penalty. And this is how the classified label warps and kills critical thinking, which is another casualty of the war industry. The classified label is how the MIC hides their war crimes and human rights violations. If they're not doing anything wrong, what do they have to hide, right? So if America is always on the up and up, then why would they need to classify any documents about the American military shooting journalists and unarmed civilians from a helicopter? Hmm. Look, I understand that troop movements and active missions have to remain classified for the sake of the soldiers. But that's not what this label is primarily used for. What we see the media using the classified label is uh, as, a, as a way to demonize journalism and get away with war crimes. The military is also the world's largest polluter. The obvious reason is that they destroy the very earth itself with a barrage of rockets and the never-ending precipitation of Hellfire missiles. The large vehicles that transport these weapons and the bases themselves run on, well, all, all of the fossil fuels. They also use burn pits as waste managements. This puts toxins and carcinogens into the air, which then affects the soldiers and veterans of these war zones, along with the natives. War corporations also mismanage hazardous waste and chemical run, uh, chemicals that run off into the water system at home and abroad. One of these byproducts is depleted uranium, which can cause catastrophic health and environmental emergencies in communities. The money spent by the war industry is literally a cancer on this planet. The military industrial complex claims their mission is to, quote, protect and promote freedom around the world and position themselves as altruistic and benevolent. Benevolent organizations don't fund the bombing of civilians and journalists thousands of miles away and then cover up that story. And they definitely don't fund poisoning the citizens they're claiming to protect by being headquartered in their communities. And most definitely don't topple legitimate democracies because they can't just go in and take their resources. Say so The American military industrial complex is like a spoiled child that needs a spanking and a timeout. The astronomical amount of money the MIC gets is spent on objectively bad things. And the MIC is important for capitalism. Everyone prospers when the war industry prospers. Even regular evil corporations like Amazon, Facebook, Spotify, Google, and the like are all contracted by the military industrial complex. So supporting these companies thereby helps aid the MIC's budget even more. That's why the center of capitalism is an economy built on perpetual war. And yes, I know it sounds like I'm saying money is inherently evil, and when it's used by capitalists, it is. Right now, it's being used as a limiter, something that only has value when it perpetuates more pain, trauma, and makes money uh, on, on the distractions from that pain. But when money is used to improve people's lives rather than to cause them more pain, money becomes an avenue to progress that will eventually lead us to a society that has no use for money. And if we're really lucky, no use for a military either. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, if you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up uh, and please share this out with as many friends as you can. Share it with some friends, share with some enemies, share it with anybody that you feel uh, would benefit from from hearing content like this that, that maybe you can have a conversation with uh, that's that's always the hope is that uh, you can you can share this with some folks and, and and start a dialogue maybe maybe learn some different perspectives and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I do have some uh, show dates coming up, some show dates, some virtual shows 
um, uh, some Forkful of Noodles recordings where you can be a part of a virtual audience for Forkful of Noodles. And I have some in-person uh, show dates coming up as well. Uh, I'm going to be performing my uh, new stand-up comedy hour, Citizen Revolution, um, in some select places over the winter. And then I'll be going on tour uh, in 2020, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm also performing my stand-up show virtually over Zoom. So if you want to be in the audience for any of those things, um, you can go directly to my website to grab tickets. That's krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. I've got a couple of virtual shows to round out the year, and then I'm, I'm kicking back into doing monthly Forkful of Noodles recordings uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the year as well. So I'm very excited to get back into those. Again, you can find tickets and details for all of the shows that are coming up on my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can grab a stand-up comedy album. You can check out past episodes of my show. You can sign up for my email list. Uh, you can become a sustaining member, get free tickets to virtual shows and live shows when I come to your city, uh, plus a bunch of other cool bonus exclusive content as well. Uh, so tons of stuff uh, to do right on the on the website. So again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to the people that uh, consistently support the show by sharing, by watching, by liking, by leaving uh, leaving really cool and awesome comments. Um, and to and to those folks that uh, that do become sustaining members as well, uh, you guys are amazing. You guys help keep uh, keep the show going. Keep keep me keep me working as 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 hard as I do and and sharing the content uh, that I really really love and enjoy to share. Uh, so with all of that said and done, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.